Colleges and universities across the country are receiving financial aid applications with inaccurate tax information because of a technical glitch involving a third-party vendor, which may result in about a million students receiving incorrect aid offers. This is just the latest error in, another, in the uh, setbacks for the revamped FAFSA program that has been plagued by many challenges in recent months. Let's bring back our panel. So Kyle, tell our viewers what FAFSA is and uh, why it matters so much to parents and, and children with uh, trying to get into college. Well, it's a student aid application that essentially governs many people's student tuition and the aid that they get from the colleges that they're applying to. And I think this is a great example of your government at work. Congress put a FAFSA redesign in a 2020 omnibus bill. and the, Just the slipped idea, it in there. <laughs> the, right, the idea was to make it simpler, to make it easier on parents who have long complained about the difficulty of filling out the FAFSA form and the invasiveness of it. And lo and behold, it has been error after error, delay after delay. Uh, colleges are now delaying admission, uh, admission timelines in order to try to give students more time. Uh, but the, I think this is a great example of the kind of meltdown that is only possible when you centralize uh, this kind of thing nationally in one big government program. And I just keep going back to uh, these are the people that want to, you, you know, the progressives and Democrats want to put in charge of uh, health care and all sorts of other. Well, the American stuff. auto industry and the energy industry and, uh, and, and, and everything else. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Kim, they had two years to, to put this into <laughs> into place. I mean, you I mean, you know, why didn't they um, you know, tell Amazon to do it or somebody with some actual uh, uh, technical expertise? <laughs> I mean, it's an excellent question, Paul, but why didn't they do that when they rolled out the Obamacare website? Why didn't I mean, government always thinks it can do this. Um, and all you have to do is we're called the DMV in the lines, and we wonder yet again why we're doing this. And look, I think we also have to put this in the context of the broader environment here as well, too. There's a lot of students that are choosing not to go to college anymore, um, in part because these processes are difficult, but they're also worried about the amount of debt they might be getting. Um, we've had, I think, almost 33 percent fewer of these applications go in this year. That was a statistic from a couple of weeks ago. We, this is also happening in the context of the first year since the Supreme Court ruled on race and admissions. So it's throwing another huge wild card into the admissions process. And a lot of people are just throwing their hands up and say, why bother? And you have to ask how that fits in with a country that continues to suggest that one of its top priorities is a better educated workforce. And this is just, this is more than uh, 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 just a technical glitches, Dan, because this affects the decisions that parents and children have to make about what kind of college they can afford. I mean, they're getting these acceptances, or they have, and they've got to decide, well, you know, can we go to this school or that school? Uh, so some of these people just don't know what their financial obligations are going to be. No, not at all. And I think as a result, you have to wonder whether there are not going to eventually be significant national political implications in this. This is a federal program, big federal program. The Democratic Party is the party of big national gov government. Joe Biden makes no bones about that. But increasingly, as Kyle was pointing out, these big, these programs have become so big, they just don't work. A similar example, Joe Biden's debt forgiveness plan. It is extremely complex to apply for debt forgiveness, almost as complex as the FAFSA process. During COVID, the small business loans completely beset by widespread fraud. And I think people are hundreds of billions, hundreds of billions. <laughs> and people are beginning to understand that the federal government has become simply incompetent and we're going to need an alternative. It'll be the burden is on Republicans to provide or suggest those alternatives. But the Democrats own these problems. Uh, uh, Kyle, there's some suggestion that uh, this is a, the problem here was in part inattention. Richard Cordray ran, runs the student, uh, the, the, the FAFSA shop at the education department. Uh, and people think, well, you know, maybe they're too preoccupied with student loan relief or other things instead of actually getting this job done. 
Yeah, that might well be true. And you hear similar criticisms across all areas of government when the Federal Reserve is talking about how worried it is about climate change and so on and so forth. Set uh, a monetary policy. <laughs> right, exactly. And I think it's another reminder just of how much of higher education is underwritten by the federal government. And maybe that's something that Republicans ought to look at changing the next time they get back in power. Yeah, you could put that line against all kinds of things that maybe Republicans should, <laughs> but, but they don't, 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 but they don't. But they don't, 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 but they